The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta is one of the most popular of all members of the Kraft family of fine foods. It's known to folks everywhere as the cheese food of exceptional nourishment and delightful flavor. Enjoy it often. When you do, you may be sure you are enjoying the finest quality cheese food you can buy. Velveeta, made only by Kraft. I'm Grace Tuttle. As a school teacher in Summerfield, my time is taken up by many interesting projects. Right now, it's the hobby show, which I'm sponsoring in the school gymnasium. Of course, a lot of my time is also taken up by two of the town's eligible bachelors. Oh, excuse me. The most eligible ones at the door. Hello, Grace. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Come in. Yeah, thank you. Sorry I'm late, but I had to help Leroy prepare for a Boy Scout test. As soon as you catch your breath, I have another little job for you. Girl Scouts? No, I have to work up some signs for the hobby show. Hobby show? Yes, I need a sign for each booth, and you're the one to paint them. Yeah, I have a hobby we don't have to paint a sign for. There's a full moon going to waste over the reservoir. <laughs> now, Strauss Morton. Well, I thought we might take a little drive this evening. After all, spring is officially here. You just feel like it's spring. You bet. Come on, Grace. Bundle up good and we'll go out and enjoy the spring air. Nuh-uh. I'm going to get these signs painted tonight. hee <laughs> hee Matter of fact, I'm disappointed that you haven't shown more interest in the hobby show. Well, I've never gone in much for hobbies. Of course, when I was a kid, I used to have a hobby horse. Uh, yes, come on, uh, grab a paint pot and a brush. Well, I'll draw a picture of the moon, just to show you what you're missing. I'm not listening. Yeah, here's the moon, and here's the reservoir. And here's your hat. What? I mean it. If you aren't going to help me, you may as well go home. You but Grace. I wonder who that can be. Probably the man in the moon wondering why we haven't shown up. <laughs> Good evening, Grace. Why, Clarence. Surprise, surprise. Hey, Olson, what's he doing here? Did someone send for a doctor? No. Pushy intern. Someday I'll send him to a doctor. <laughs> Seriously, Grace, I want to show you what I'm planning to enter in your hobby show. Oh, well, come in. Oh, I see the water commissioner is here. <laughs> having trouble with the plumbing? Hello, Olson. Don't look so stricken, Gildersleeve. I won't stay long. Good. Won't take me more than two or three hours to show Grace my paintings. Oh. For... I'm anxious to see them, Clarence. Of course, I only dabble on weekends. It's sort of a no-talent church here, eh, Olson? <laughs> Gildersleeve, would you like to go listen to the radio while we discuss art? It's art. This is a lovely watercolor. Well, thank you, Grace. Yeah, I bet you got them at the dime store. <laughs> They give you pictures like that if you just buy the frames. <laughs> Jealous. I love the subtle colors. Oh, that little still life I did at home in the kitchen. Old bananas. <laughs> what I really enjoy is getting out and painting landscapes. Uh, what do you think of my marine? It's gorgeous. I can see the water, but where's the marine? <laughs> it looks like something Frederick Waugh might have done. Well, thank you, thank you. Then you approve of my entries for your hobby show? They're wonderful. Uh, Gildersleeve, what are you entering? Oh, uh, Throckmorton doesn't have a hobby. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, what? I have hobbies. I just don't flaunt them. I'm no show-off like some people I know. Now, some people just don't have anything to show off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to get rid of him. Olson? Hey, yes, Gildersleeve? Probably you don't realize Grace has a lot of work to do. Signs to paint for the show. Oh, then you need a painter. Will you really help, Clarence? Yeah, but Grace... Will I? <laughs> There's nothing I'd enjoy more than staying here working with you, Grace. Yeah, I just thought of a hobby for me. Keep my big, fat mouth shut. Here's your evening paper, Mr. 
Mr. Gilsley. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. I see one of your lady friends is staging a hobby show. Yeah. Is that in the paper? Yes, sir. There's a picture of Miss Tuttle, Dr. Olson, and some other gentleman holding up their hobbies. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, look at Olson grin. You'd think he just painted Whistler's mother. Ain't that the postmaster? Yeah, holding up his stamp collection. He's getting so Grace won't pay any attention to anybody who doesn't have a hobby. Yes? Yeah, I was over there last night and Dr. Olson came by. Uh-oh. Yeah, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I felt completely left out. Yes, sir. Probably I should have had a hobby all these years. I thought you had one. Me? Girls. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You always had plenty of them. You, I know. A sailor's got a girl in every port, but the water commissioner's got them on tap all over town. <laughs> no, Bertie. You got a hobby that is a hobby. You just take your girls to the hobby show and put them in your booth. Oh, you can't miss winning first prize. Who's going to look at the stamp collection when they can look at your collection? Oh, all right, but you know I'm not a ladies' man. Well, I know this. You ain't been collecting stamps all these years. <laughs> Forget about the hobby show. Let Olson have his fun. Your other interests in life. Say, the Jolly Boys haven't gotten together in some time. We might have a meeting the night of the hobby show. Yeah, Peavy's president. I'll suggest he call the meeting. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this evening? You know, I just thought I'd drop in while I'm waiting to pick up Leroy. Are you chauffeuring for the kids again this evening? No, I just had to take the boy over to the library. Oh, there's always something, Peavy. Yeah, well, I guess a growing youngster demands a lot of time. Yeah, but I want to encourage him in his studies. <laughs> well, my father was always encouraging me. Uh, did he help you a lot? Oh, my, yes. He got me up at 5 o'clock and said, Dickie boy, hit the books. Oh, don't tell me he called you Dickie boy. Well, my name's Richard, my nickname was Dick, and I was your boy, Dickie boy. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You mean they never called you Throcky Boy? No. <laughs> Phoebe, I want to talk to you about something. Very yeah, well. We haven't had a Jolly Boys meeting for some time. <laughs> Our singing's so bad, it takes quite a while to forget it. <laughs> yeah. How about a meeting tomorrow night? Oh, my, no. That's a hobby show night. You're going to the hobby show? Well, I'm here to tell you I've got a hobby. You, Phoebe? And where am I going to show it if I don't show it at the hobby show? Uh, all right, Peavy, go. I intend to. We'll have a meeting without you. I'll get the judge, Floyd, and the chief. I don't think you'll have any luck, Mr. Gildersleeve. What do you mean? The judge is entering his coin collection. He should have quite a collection. He never spends any. And Floyd's entering something, and Chief of Police Gates is displaying his collection of confiscated blackjack. <laughs> Blackjacks? What a display for a school gymnasium. I'm surprised you aren't interested in the hobby show since your girl is staging it. Not me. I don't follow the crowd. Everybody seems to be going, including Dr. Olson. Well, I don't care. I'm no sheep. And if he beats your time with Miss Tuttle, you'll be the goat. <laughs> All right, watch it, Dickie boy. Mr. Gildersleeve, don't call me Dickie boy. Your father called you Dickie boy. Well, he could lick me, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Phoebe. Gosh, Unc, I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long at the library. Oh, that's all right, Leroy. It's worth a little time if some knowledge penetrates that head of yours. With all this scientific stuff, why doesn't somebody invent a knowledge salve? Knowledge salve? Yeah, rub it on your head and let it sink in while you're out playing baseball. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Hey. What's the matter? You know, the lights are still on in the school gymnasium. I think I'll run in and see if Grace is still working on the hobby booths. Can I go in with you, Unc? No, you stay in the car, my boy. If Grace is there, I'll only be a minute. Ah! Hey. <laughs> well, Leroy, stay in the car. I'll be right back. If you're not back in 15 minutes, can I hop the horn? No. Oh, that boy. Yeah, glad I drove by the school. 
The only way I can get away from Olsen is to catch Grace in the gymnasium. Well, there she is, tacking up a sign. Hello, Grace. Hello, Throckmorton. Why, George, you look cute on that stepladder. Thank you. Surprised to see you here. Well, I was hoping I'd find you alone. She isn't alone. Oop. I didn't see you in that booth, Olsen. I've been helping Grace. Clarence is so devoted to the hobby show. Yeah, I know what he's devoted to. Uh, Clarence, will you hand me some more tacks? Yeah, I will. I've got them. Here you are. Thank you, Clarence. I don't know what I'd have done tonight without you. Yes. (laughs) Uh, They're getting entirely too friendly. (laughs) Do you mind if I start setting up my booth? Why, it's Mr. Peavy. Hello, Miss Tuttle. I thought I'd bring over part of my exhibit tonight. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Your booth's right over here. Oh, thank you, Dr. Olson. Peavy, you didn't tell me your hobby was model railroads? You didn't ask me. Oh. I thought I'd put down the track tonight, and tomorrow Mrs. Peavy's going to drive the train over. Wonderful. Is she interested in trains? Well, Mrs. Peavy's the engineer. A lady engineer? Well, she runs things around the house, so I let her run the train. <laughs> oh, they've forgotten I'm here. You know, Mr. Peavy, I'm finding out more things about people. You don't change. Well, they have such fascinating interests. You have your railroads. Clarence has his beautiful paintings. What do you have to offer, Gildersleeve? Clarence, don't embarrass Throckmorton. No, I, I'm not embarrassed. I, uh, I stopped by tonight to ask if there's another booth available. Why, Throckmorton, I thought you weren't interested in hobbies. Like I said last night, I just don't flaunt them. Wonderful. What shall I put you down for? Well, uh... (laughs) Can't you think of anything, Gildersleeve? Well, I'm just thinking of which hobby to present. Oh, that's Leroy blowing the horn. I have to run now. Save me a booth. What an obvious character. Gracie's just entering the hobby show to be near you. Oh, a man wouldn't go to all that trouble just because he likes me. (laughs) Well, no, I wouldn't say that. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. What are you having for lunch tomorrow, Mom? Need an idea? Well, relax. Here it is, an idea for a meatless main dish that's as delicious and nourishing as a main dish should be because it's made with Kraft Smooth Melting Pasteurized Processed Cheese Food, Velveeta. We call it a two-tone golden sandwich, and here's all you do. First, make scrambled eggs. For a change, try adding some fresh chopped green chives. Then pile the fluffy hot eggs onto slices of whole wheat toast. And on top of the eggs, put a good thick slice of Velveeta for just the rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor you want. Then slide the sandwiches into a moderate oven, about 350 degrees, just long enough for the Velveeta to melt. That's all there is to it for a lunch or supper main dish that's not only mighty fine tasting, but mighty fine in the nourishment department, too. Velveeta is so rich in vital food values from milk that just two ounces of this cheese food... The amount you put on that sandwich gives you more protein, calcium, and phosphorus, as much riboflavin, and more vitamin A than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. Have this wonderful golden sandwich tomorrow. Pick up a two-pound loaf of Velveeta at your grocer's so you can enjoy this smooth, melting cheese food in hot main dishes and for cold snacks and sandwiches, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the finest quality cheese food you can buy... And it's made only by Kraft. Well, the night before his girlfriend's hobby show, Mr. Gilsey decided he better get himself a hobby. He even went so far as to reserve a hobby booth. Now he's wringing his hand, racking his brain, and pacing the floor. <laughs> oh, well. Yes? Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come in, Bertie. I'm about to close up the kitchen, and if you want a midnight snack, I... No, 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 thanks, Bertie. Not hungry. No, sir. Have you thought of a hobby yet? No, I may be up all night. Yes, sir. Well, some people collect stamps, some collect butterflies, but you don't have time for that. I've got butterflies. I'm committed to having something in that booth tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Bertie... 
If you were going in for a hobby, what would you collect? Taxes. <laughs> Taxes. Of course, I guess Uncle Sam's got that booth. Please, Bertie, I'm trying to think. Yes, I've looked through books for ideas, tried everything. Well, you might get a hobby out of something you used to do as a boy, if they had hobbies then. <laughs> well, I made kites, and for some reason they wouldn't fly. That takes care of kites. Say, I did take a manual training course in high school. Used to be pretty good at woodwork. You got the tools in the basement. That's right. There's my old lathe down there, and I, I could use Leroy's tool chest. I'll clean out the basement first thing in the morning. You can go to work. Right, George. I'm beginning to see the light. What you gonna make? A lamp. Oh, wait till Grace sees how I can mold a piece of wood. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dr. Olson will wish he'd stuck to painting tonsils. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ah, I'm glad I got an early start. <laughs> yeah, that old lathe works like a sewing machine. Yeah, glad I thought to make a lamp base in the shape of a water tower. <laughs> After the show, I'll give it to Grace and it'll remind her of me. Hi, Unc. Oh, good morning, Leroy. Aren't you going to the office today? Oh, no, no. I'll need every minute to finish this. What are you doing? Hey, I said, what are you doing? Oh, what did you say? I said, what are you doing? I'm working on my hobby. Yeah? Do you mind stopping a minute? Well, I'm pretty busy. What is it, my boy? Can you help me with my homework? Homework? It's time for school. Well, it'll only take a second. I want you to help me with this problem. Oh, all right. Shoot. Okay. A and B start from the same place and go in opposite directions, A traveling 30 miles an hour and B traveling 10 miles an hour. If B starts three hours before A, how long has A traveled when they're 90 miles apart? Uh, how's that again? <laughs> Here's the book. Read it. Oh, yeah. Better get my pencil. Yeah, let's see now. B has gone 30 miles before A starts. After an hour, 40 miles. A has gone 30 at 70. Where do you suppose they're going? Hey. <laughs> Quiet, Leroy. In an hour and a half, each has gone 45. Hey, that's 90 miles. It takes them an hour and a half. Swell, huh? That's the answer I got. What? I just wanted to be sure I was right. Oh, what a waste of time. Well, be seeing you, Unc. Goodbye, my boy. Gee. Now maybe I can get back to my lamp base. Hope I can finish it in time. She's taking shape. With Leroy in school, I won't have any more interruptions. Miss Dursley! Oop. Yes, Bertie? Can you stop doing what you're doing for a minute? Oh, for... why, Bertie? You know, Leroy just ran for school. Yes? Well, he went off without his lunch pail. Zeke. Can you drop it by school? Oh, all right, confound it. I'll take it over. <laughs> Nearly four o'clock, and I haven't finished sandpapering. Still have to glue the legs on, stain it. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Say, we were right this morning. What do you mean, we were right? The algebra problem. Oh, I'm well, glad to hear it. Yeah. I should have asked you about the four I missed. Hey. <laughs> yes, yes. What are you making, a baseball bat? I'm making a lamp. Well, gosh, don't get touchy. How do I know it's a lamp? Where's the bulb? Leroy, the bulb will be sticking out of the water tower. Where's the water tower? That's my lamp. Oh. I haven't put it all together yet. You're going to write a card and tell them what it is, huh? <laughs> my boy, aren't you supposed to go to Clara Pettibone's birthday party this afternoon? Yeah, I'm going to put in an appearance. Hey. Hadn't you better hike upstairs and put on your blue suit? My blue suit? Just to get ice cream on it? Mrs. Pettibone is a stickler for doing things according to Hoyle. Besides, you want to look like a gentleman. 
I do. Young man, your blue suit. Oh, grown. Well, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yes. Running out of time. Haven't turned out the legs for the tank yet. Uh, oh, not again. Yes, Leroy. How do I look? Well, that's better. Now you look. Leroy, you're wearing your blue suit <laughs> with tennis shoes? We may play basketball. Uh, not at a party staged by Mrs. Pettibone. Now get upstairs and put on your black shoes and see if they shine. Can I shine my tennis shoes? Leroy. Here's an idea for a brand new kind of suit. Darn leg doesn't fit. May have to bevel it some more. Time's getting away. Ah! How do I look now? Oh, you know, that's more like it, my boy. Now, let me straighten your tie so the label doesn't show. Okay. Now, don't forget your manners at the party. I won't. Not me. Now, what are you going to say when you give Clara her birthday present? I'll say, here. <laughs> no. You wish her a happy birthday. Oh, sure, I'll do that. And yeah. what do you say to Mrs. Pettibone after the party? Well, I'm hoping I don't see much of her. <laughs> Leroy, don't forget to thank her for inviting you. Compliment the refreshments. Okay, okay, I better go. Yeah, have a nice time. I'll be thinking of so many things I got to say and do, I won't have time to have fun. <laughs> Oh, youth. Well, maybe I can get this lamp finished now. <laughs> Legs are going to be short for a water tank. <laughs> but if I made it to scale instead of a table lamp, it'd be a chandelier. <laughs> uh, wonder if I'll be able to finish it for the hobby show. Oh, my goodness. What is it, Bertie? Did you stop doing what you're doing? About all I've done today is stop. Leroy just ran off to the party. Good. But he forgot his present. Oh, poo! Mr. Gilsey, you off to the hobby show at last? Yeah, Bertie. I wouldn't even go if Grace weren't sponsoring it. Is that your lamp? Oh, don't rub it in. I didn't get to finish it. You going to enter it anyway? No. I'm not going to be a laughing stock, Bertie. I'm going to leave it on the back porch, and tomorrow I'll split it up for kindling. Oh, that's too bad. Are you sure you don't want to enter it as unfinished business? Bertie. That could be a new hobby. Unfinished business. <laughs> on the back steps. I guess it's a lamp. Gosh, I better get it down to the hobby show for him. Well, quite a few people at the hobby show. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Peavy. Where's your hobby? I didn't finish it. Ah, too bad. Miss Tuttle will be disappointed. Yeah, I know. You care to come over and play train with me and Mrs. Peavy? Thanks. No, I'll just wander around. Yeah? Very well. Hey, Gildersleeve. Yeah, Olson. Well, what happened to your hobby? I won a prize with my painting. Great. Go frame yourself. <laughs> oh, he'll be number one with Grace now. Oop. There's Leroy putting something in my booth. It's my lamp. Leroy! Oh, hi, Unc. Get that lamp out of my booth. Didn't you forget it? No, I didn't get to finish it. I wonder 
understood what was wrong with it. Yeah, there were too darn many interruptions. Oh, there you are, Throckmorton. Hello, oh. Leroy. Hi, Miss Tuttle. Hello, Grace. I'm dying to see your hobby entry. Is this it? Well, Grace, you see... What is it? Something futuristic? It's a lamp base. Oh. Well, as a matter of fact, Grace, I didn't get to finish it today. Leroy didn't know and brought it anyway. You were trying to do all this in one day? Well... Then you really don't have a hobby. <laughs> I does too have a hobby. Now, Leroy... What is it, Leroy? Well, heck, the way things have been going, I guess I'm his hobby. Oh? I guess he'd have finished his lamp and done a lot of other things if I didn't take up so much of his time. No, my boy. I guess Unks never had the chance to do a lot of the things he wanted to. Leroy, this hobby doesn't mean a thing. Throckmorton, I think we should have a special prize for you. For me? Mm Mm-hmm. Because raising a boy is about the best hobby a man can have. Well, never thought of it as a hobby. (laughs) Hey, Unk, if I'm a hobby, I'd better go sit in your booth. What? (laughs) I'm the only hobby that can wiggle its ears. (laughs) Oh, what a boy. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Looking for a good food buy? Then get Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food. Delicious, nourishing Velveeta is one of the best food buys you can make because you can enjoy it so many ways, in snacks, in sandwiches, and for a variety of economical hot main dishes. Make Velveeta your handy helper for all kinds of money-saving hot meals. Remember, your best buy in cheese food is Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Now the fire's catching on, Throckmorton. Yeah. That lamp base makes pretty good lawn. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't get to finish it for the hobby show. Well, Grace, I'd never be able to compete with some of those entries. I thought little Joey Martin had the most novel hobby. Yeah, the little crippled boy? Mm-hmm. Did you see his collection of Easter seals? One for every year they've had them. Well, I guess that's little Joey's way of saying thanks for all Easter seals have done for him. Yeah, I remember when he couldn't walk. I know, and his parents weren't able to help much. Well, the care and treatment of crippled children is costly. That's why all of us have to help. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure you send a contribution to your Easter Seal Society for Crippled Children. A youngster who has to walk with crutches and braces needs lots of friends to help him on his way. The American people have always been very generous in helping every worthwhile cause, but perhaps no one thing can give you more genuine satisfaction than holding out a helping hand to a crippled child. Give them a chance by giving. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Shipp, George Neese, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's an idea for a brand new kind of soup. Soup you fix fast and easy. In the top of a double boiler, add a can of condensed tomato soup to an equal quantity of water. Then, when it's steaming hot, spoon in the contents of an 8-ounce jar of Kraft's Cheese Whiz and blend well. This Cheese Whiz tomato soup combination gives you the creamiest, most delightful tasting soup you've had in a long time. It's a wonderful main dish for lunch or supper, an exciting appetizer for dinner. Tomorrow, get tomato soup and Cheese Whiz, Kraft's pasteurized processed cheese spread. Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC radio network.